I'm Neema Srinivasan, Senior Vice President at Added Value. Uh, I'll be talking today about uh, Connectonomics. So Connectonomics actually was born out of a presentation that Yahoo wanted to do in their thought leadership space, where they like to just um, find out what's going on in the space right today. Uh, the subject is given to them, and they like to know what's going on, and sound really smart about um, the industry, the way it's evolving, what's relevant to the target, what's relevant to marketers, and it goes on um, in, in that space. So uh, this was a study about the online connections of women, and we wanted to start off with something that was sociologically relevant, because so much has already been said. And uh, we've heard a lot, and we went through a lot of quotes that famous people have said about women, and what we find is that everyone has funny things to say about how complex women are and how no one can ever understand them. Uh, in fact, even Freud starts off on that note. So um, what we thought that we would do is start off by just laying that context. It was a qualitative and quantitative piece, uh, but it always helps to talk about why this is relevant and why such a study is even necessary at all. And we had um, we went through all of the different labels that have been used for women that all these hats they must wear that obviously even if a woman is not necessarily born complex uh, by society telling her that she needs to be that way uh, and the evolutions that she goes through uh, from a little girl to a teenager to a mother uh, uh, to a bride to a mother uh, and so on, a uh, career woman versus a homemaker, it just becomes so complex that uh, obviously uh, at, at, at some level, it becomes difficult to understand what might truly be relevant to women and what they really need. So we decided to tackle it from that standpoint and to understand that, and also to sort of break through all of these different stereotypes and labels that women were already wearing. We figured that unless we actually cut through that core, uh, and that's one of the things that this visual tries to show, that that's what the study wanted to do, to understand what the needs really are, uh, and look beyond these labels, and um, all of this is done really in PowerPoint, there's nothing really fancy, uh, but we try to bring those visuals and ideas to life uh, in how we show this. So that's sort of why it's called Connectonomics, the connections of women, the online connections of women uh, that lead to the transactions that take place. It's emotional uh, and also brand related, so at some level financial, and therefore Connectonomics. Um, that uh, being said, we wanted to talk about how it relates to marketing effectiveness. Uh, what we found was that marketing effectiveness is in fact a function of the needs that women have, the different channels, the online channels that they use and what they do, their whom they connect with, what they share and receive, and finally the receptivity that women have to, um, to various messaging, uh, ads, uh, product related information and things like that, and that's how all of it ties together. So obviously, if at the end of this piece we had a better idea of what marketing effectiveness was, we hope that it would be a useful and relevant piece uh, to marketers everywhere and they would be able to connect more effectively with women. Uh, so in terms of how the story is told, it's divided into exactly these three pieces and you should see the, uh, the flow come through that way. Uh, and that's what we're about to see in just a moment. So the first section starts off obviously with the needs of women and uh, you can sort of see the same uh, iconography that you saw in the first slide where we talked about the labels. Uh, but you see all of this writing which talks about sort of the, the complex needs that, uh, you know, presumably complex, uh, but uh, the hope is that through the, the story that's being told that it actually becomes clear. And when we move further in, uh, what you will see now is actually some of these needs coming to life. Uh, we have used both qualitative and quantitative research to come in it because um, uh, and in fact started off with expert interviews to know what uh, from sort of a sociological standpoint and marketers in the field all thought about uh, connecting with women and what was really working. So you can see some of these things pop up here. Obviously it's not immediately clear what these things mean, uh, but that we uh, hoped would come through even more clearly in what you're about to see in this slide. Uh, this is uh, your sort of you know regular need states maps, uh, but what we we hope to achieve here is to show what really describes the landscape today. So you can see uh, on top you have uh, sort of a reliance on others. 
as it turns out, this is really important to women. Uh, they tend not to be all about, you know, this I can do myself. I don't need anyone, regardless of what we may hear uh, as conversations in society. Women actually are very communal, and they tend to rely on each other. And something that's incredibly, incredibly critical to women today, uh, in an online world which sort of empowers them uh, and allows them to know that, you know what, it's okay not to be a superhuman woman. Um, so this personal growth aspect is incredibly critical to women, and that's why you see that area highlighted. Uh, these are the need states, you know, the sort of the repair and healing, that, you know, I need to be better, uh, I don't feel that good, how do I feel better? Mutual sharing, that makes them feel better. Uh, sort of a release from all the stresses they feel, the need to improve themselves. Uh, all of this, well, you know, not in some sort of robotic, I need to be better sort of way, but also, they are very affectionate, as we've often known women uh, are supposed to be. Uh, but it's also okay to care, take care of themselves. Uh, not very surprising at all. Uh, bargain hunting, being a really good shopper, also another part of the sort of key need states. Uh, all of these are highlighted there, and these were the prevalent needs. Uh, it's uh, another key takeaway from this slide also is on the bottom left hand side you can see things like sort of upping the ante, being uh, provocative for the sake of being provocative, these sort of things, um, a competitive, uh, I do with myself sort of spirit, uh, not that it's non-existent in women, but they are less prevalent and that's what we hope to tell uh, with this slide. So moving on, uh, what we did then was, okay, so there are various groups of women and uh, we have all of these different stereotypes, so how does it really layer out? And we thought spider, uh, uh, spider charts, a much maligned way of actually showing data, but we thought it did a good way of comparing really young women, you can see on the outside, all the women on the inside, and they're really similar. Obviously, younger women have more stronger uh, needs because, you know, they're still trying to figure themselves out, especially uh, the needs related to validation are very strong in younger women. And uh, this chart sort of tries to say that story, and uh, it comes through fairly clearly. And um, with that, we move on to the second section, which would be about the channels. Uh, what we did was we studied all of of these different channels that you can see, women's lifestyle style sites, special interest style sites, review sites, email, social networking, Twitter, um, sort of uh, the whole online enchilada really. And uh, in terms of telling stories, what we found is that icons are, uh, do a really great job because people process information visually. Uh, uh, they start reading, and if there is sort of a visual element to anchor it, it really helps. So um, that's why we develop these uh, icons tell the story, and all of the collateral that went with it always had this, so it would easily tie back into the icons. So moving on to the next slide, uh, you can see how we were able to, all those need states we talked about, it links back to these channels, and uh, we were able to identify what need states specifically the channels deliver on. And that's why people, and um, on the following slide you will see social networking, and you can see that it delivers on a completely different set of uh, emotions and need states. And this sort of explains why people need to use sort of a mix of online channels. Uh, you know, it's not just that they have different functions, that you may use it to connect with different people, one is more informal and formal, but at a very basic level, they actually deliver, deliver on completely different need states, and that's important to know. Because your mindset uh, during that time will be different, and how you should connect with them, what they need to see, and all of those things are different, and that's what this, uh, we, we try to establish. Uh, not that, uh, you know, e even while doing something simple like a bar chart, uh, we try to tie that in with all of these icons that continue to tell that story. Here we just simply talk about the, uh, how, pre how prevalent the use of each of these are, uh, a simple story to tell, but connected through with the icons, as I said. And um, uh, in this slide, we try to sh talk about how, uh, whom they connect with, and you can see the green line for email. Uh, you know, email and social networking, uh, it's really obviously prevalent. They work great to connect with close, uh, close friends and people you know. Uh, this happened during a time when uh, Facebook, it, it seemed, could do no wrong and was really, really very strong. And uh, the, it, what the study helped uh, explain and understand was, yes, Facebook is great, but in the context of having conversations about brands, uh, about why people are there. The story is, uh, is a little more nuanced than just everything is happening on Facebook. So you can see that different channels are used to connect with different people, uh, depending on what works there, and we use line charts to show that. Even with a simple 
bar chart, uh, it's still sort of rendered in the spirit of how this uh, deck was written. Uh, and what we know from this chart is you can see all the green pop uh, with, with the social networking on Facebook. And it, it is used for posting and sharing and um, videos and things that are interesting. Uh, but uh, that doesn't in itself tell the entire story because on the following slide you see when people talk about it, what happens uh, offline, how they share, this is really heightened in special interest and review sites. That's where you see the green pop. Um, so we explore further the reason for that. And one of the things is that expertise, something that women need to sort of hang their hat on uh, and understand and uh, sort of connect with because, you know, the personal growth aspect was so important to them. You can see that that uh, is what is heightened on the left-hand side, not towards the right-hand social networking space. So it's this expertise and anonymity was important because when people are trying to sort of repair and heal, you know, talking about like a, um, a relationship in trouble, uh, difficulties in child rearing. These are not things they want to share on social networking sites. So you can see that that's not the app space. So we developed this sort of schematic that tries to explain that there are casual and deeper connections that happen uh, and ha you need to be in some cases accountable like what you say in social networking. That becomes sort of a bar. Uh, it's your cocktail party self, your best self. While uh, special interest sites there on the right top uh, allows you to sort of uh, be, uh, you know, it gives you the shroud of anonymity and you can really get to figure out what's bothering you so things can be better for you. So that, uh, another really simple chart talk about the dynamics of exchange, uh, you can see um, a, a bar chart, but we try to sort of render it in a more USA Today style that talks about, you know, where you share, where you receive and what that, uh, how that goes on and uh, you, you can see visually uh, it's got that painting smudge style. Um, I've been moving on, and then the story goes on to talk about the brands and um, what happens then. You can see that this is heightened more on the women's lifestyles and review sites and all of that, and it actually drops in social networking sites because you know when you're in a bar, it, when you have your cocktail party self, that's not the ideal place for ads to engage. And so that's what we try to show with that. So finally, how do you help marketers, uh, which is uh, the reason why we're there. Uh, this is actually one of the visuals that women themselves drew and we just rendered that onto uh, PowerPoint. Uh, they talked about the connections. You can see this, this complex web of connections, that, but they were very clear about what they were doing. And uh, we try to recreate that in terms of how they go to these various channels. And on the left-hand side, it's delivering on these needs. On top, they're receiving this information. On the right-hand side, they're sharing this information. At the bottom, it talks about the receptivity of where they're receptive and where they're not. We move on to, to show how uh, it works when, say, women's lives outside or social networking sites. You can see how those dynamics are completely different. And, um, and eventually a wrap up, you can see how that sequence went through needs and then the channels and then where they're receptive so that you can take away what's critical to you depending on who you are and what's important to you. With that, I'll be happy to take questions and uh, look forward to hearing from you.